Marty Schwartz here, GuitarJams.com. I've got a soloing lesson for you, and what I tried to do is I, I picked a cool progression that you can rock your pentatonic over, but also I'm going to show you some concepts to build some tension and to get some outside notes and, you know, a little more fancy stuff mixed in. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about, but uh, hopefully you dig it and you get something out of it. I've always got bonus stuff, extra blues lessons, in fact, uh, that are pretty cool. So you can click the link below and check those out. But let's get to this lesson. Here we go. All right, here's a really cool progression uh, that you can practice soloing over. It'd be considered the key of D minor, uh, but it's really cool. You can use the D minor pentatonic over the whole thing, but then there's little fancy things that we can add to it. And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks, and then I'll play the jam track at the end so you can kind of practice here at the end of this video. All right, the first chord's a D minor 7 chord. You can also play it like this. The next chord is a B flat major chord. So it's a major bar chord, roots on the sixth fret right there. You could also play a B flat major seven chord if you wanted. And then here's a really cool little turnaround, and it's considered uh, kind of in jazz, it would be a minor 2-5 or a minor 2-5-1. Now in jazz music, there's the term 2-5-1 that happens a lot. There's a major kind and there's a minor kind. This is the minor kind, but this is where we can add some fancy stuff and some cool tension and then release it and that's coming in a second. So this chord's called an E half diminished. It also has another name. E minor 7 flat 5. E half diminished, I guess, is a little easier to say, but it looks like this. And that's the 2 chord of the minor 2 5 1. So it looks like a little shape, like a D major sh chord shape here, even though it has nothing to do with D major. So it's 7th um, fret, index finger, and then 7th fret, middle finger on the G ring finger in between them, 8th fret on the D. Pinky on the 8th fret of the B. So I think it was like a little, the root's right there, and then I form the little D shape, and then I add my pinky to the B string there. We're going to do that to an A7 chord. So any of the little extra things I added there were really just all based off that same chord progression. D minor 7, B flat major, E half diminished, A7. All right, I'm going to loop that progression and then I'll show you some ideas. No matter what, you can play the D minor pentatonic over the whole thing. No problem. Okay. But also the D natural minor scale. But 
I don't, I wouldn't use that shape too much, but that's kind of the core of it. What I would say is think of that D minor pentatonic or the D minor pentatonic blues scale. And know that you, in any minor progression, you always can add this tone right here. So in this little spot, it exists right here. And also right here. there. Here's a really cool thing that helps build tension with the blues note but keeps you in this little spot with your fingers. It's a really cool thing. I've heard it, you know, Fish and the Allman Brothers, you know, a lot of jam stuff, but it kind of comes from a jazz element. Check it out. Pinky on the root. And like I said, still think of your minor box right there, but you got pinky on the root. And then you got this tone right here, which is from that harmonic minor scale, but you can also just use it as a passing tone in that minor jazzy sound. Then you still have this stuff. Pinky right there on the uh, 12 of the G. But then here's a really cool little way to get the blues note in there. Right there. Right there on the ninth fret of the B string up to the 10. So it's just a little finger position that is, stays in one spot, watch. This little thing on the B string, it doesn't really sound as good going from 10 to 9. Unless you go right down. In other words, it's the blues note. It wants to pass up or down to that. And then I just busted right into right into that. Now, something, the last thing I want to talk about, and then I'll play the jam track for you, is this thing. That minor, two, five, one. D minor being the one, minor one. There's a really nice diminished tension. Um, uh, it's like an arpeggio, but you can use this to build up tension and then release it back into the stuff I was already showing you. And it's this. It starts on that tone. So it's the 11th fret here, 9th fret on the G, 12 on the G. The diminished sound in this D minor progression also kind of serves as the same function as an A7 flat 9. So there's all these different like superimposed terms, but it's the same sound. It's that. And I'm 
going to show you where to do it right in that position. So it's the 11th fret on the D, 9 on the G, 12 on the G. And notice it's in that hand position that I was showing you earlier. Eleven on the B, nine on the high E, twelve on the high E. Ah, you feel that? Watch without any backing track. pieces of it, like this, within this, you could find parts of it, but just know, I mean, any of those tones from that arpeggio, resolve beautifully back to your root note. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you real soon. Take care.